Qatar Grand Prix was another poor race weekend for Sergio Perez. It's crazy now to think that he was possibly mounting a challenge for the title four races into the season. But since the Monaco Grand Prix, his qualifying performance has took a massive hit that he has still not managed to recover out of. But the Miami Grand Prix is where things really started to crumble for the Mexican. Since the Miami Grand Prix, the man has not had a normal Grand Prix weekend that the RB19 deserves. Getting knocked out in Q1 and Q2s, making unforced errors during free practice sessions, qualifyings and even on the race in the last two Grand Prix, his 2023 season is surely the worst that he has had in his F1 career. I also don't like people on Twitter calling him not being worthy to be an F1 driver. Because let's not forget that this is a man who was known for his potential to extract the maximum points of a Grand Prix weekend in a midfield team. He's one of those non-problematic reliable drivers on the grid exactly what Red Bull were looking for for the other side of the garage. And he did the job fairly well in both 2021 and 2022. 2023 also started off well for him, but it's not his best season. For a driver who has been in the team for three years now, he should have adapted himself to the team's culture and the way they developed their car throughout the season. So he should only progressively get better and not worse. The improvement was there in 2022 over 2021, but 2023, excluding the first four to five races, his performances has hit a massive slump. His last couple of Grand Prix performances has been unreal in the wrong way. I feel bad more than anything as I couldn't recognize the old Checo anymore. This seemed very new. The only race that I saw the old Checo making a resurgence in the midway of the 2023 season would be in Hungary and in Monza. But this season, he has clearly missed out on a lot of points and that is the honest truth. Even if he hadn't posted a challenge to Max for the title, he should have been way off into the distance from P3. The fight for P2 shouldn't be even a thing. Right now, Max has almost doubled the points of Checo and Checo is only trailing 30 points ahead of P3. A lot of crashes which the car shouldn't be involved in. Japan, Singapore, Zandvoort, Belgium Sprint, Monaco and Qatar Sprint. He's currently sitting in the top 3 in the Destructors Championship, racking up repair bills for the Milton Keynes outfit. His season started off pretty strong but has spiraled down since then. He has not been delivering what that car deserves. With Checo finally getting the warning call from the team after the Qatar Grand Prix asking for him to step up to the expectations, he has a lot to prove about himself before the 2023 season comes to an end. The pressure of the second season. Yes, Checo's performance has slumped, but how did this happen? Well, it's all the pressure that comes with being in the top team in a championship winning car with the extraordinary generational talent being your teammate. At the start of the season, his strong performance has made him put unnecessary pressure on himself to win a championship against Max. But since the Azerbaijan Grand Prix, there has been a lot of reports suggesting that Max took motivation from all the media claiming Checo to mount a championship challenge against him to win the title. He has built upon it to achieve the supreme pace that he has over Checo right now. This sudden speed from Max could have startled Checo. Checo pushing himself to match to Max's pace again, piling more pressure on himself could have caused for him to crash even more, losing confidence on the car. Watching the onboards of both Checo and Max, the driving style says all the difference that's causing for the lap time delta difference. Where Max's steering inputs are more smooth and precise, Checo's steering input is twitchy and constantly correcting the car. Last year though Ferrari and Merckx were closer to the Red Bulls at the end of the season, Checo was still able to score constant podiums and start in the top 4. But this year, despite having the outright fastest car, his qualifying position is always in the top 7 region, with him scoring a podium seemingly to be doubtful, which shouldn't be the case with the RB19. His pace deficit has also grown to max, that's now making him fall prey to the midfield runners. The pressure of being in this circumstance is not easy. It takes a lot of mental and emotional strength to be able to perform well without letting any of the social media troll, hate and harmful critic get to their head. No driver on the grid would happily accept the fact that their teammate is consistently faster than them, maybe for a race or two, but not on a consistent basis. And that's what Max has been doing to Checo. Obviously, I can't complain Max for being godly, but this ever-growing delta gap between Checo and Max has certainly hurt Checo's confidence. Every driver stacked up against Max since 2019 has failed, but that doesn't make them a bad driver. Gasly post leaving Red Bull has only shined and looked better than what he did back when he was at Red Bull. Same case with Albon. We are now praising Albon for what he is doing at Williams. The working culture at Red Bull is brutal and that's why most drivers prefer not to step their foot into the team. They pile in pressure to perform and it's up to you as to whether you sink or swim. Helpman Marco's brutal comments on Checo would also certainly not help Checo's case with his current runoff form. So Checo is certainly not a bad driver but he has to use his age and experience in F1 to find his lost form back and not let this pace difference get to him. He needs to shed off all the unnecessary performance pressure that he has piled upon himself to rediscover the real Sergio Perez that we all know and love. 
even if it takes for checkout to be still 3 to 4 times slower than max, yeah, fine. That's the reality. Sometimes, if you have to find a solution, you have to make amends with the truth. As harsh as it may be, there are two ways. The solution for this poor run of form for Checo is for him to come in terms with the truth and throw away all the pressure that he has put upon himself to find the old Sergio Perez. Only if the pressure is lifted off of his head, his focus will hit the 100% mark. Once you find the focus, it's easy to improve from there on. Or else, the bitter truth is either for him to exit the team next year on his own accord to move to another team, or the team switching him with Ricardo mid-season next year, sending him to Alpha Tauri after his poor runoff form. I'm sure if Checo moves to another team, he will shine again. It's just the combination of things that's affecting Checo's form this year. Being a Red Bull driver is not an easy task, and that too being teammate with Max has to be the worst nightmare. So yes guys, that would be my thoughts and opinion on Sergio Perez's current situation. Let me know in the comments on your thoughts and opinion on Checo and the whole situation. I'm curious to know your thoughts and perspective on the situation as well. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the thumbs up button and don't forget to subscribe to the Audubon Cast YouTube channel if you haven't already. Also hit the bell icon and turn on all notifications so you get notified whenever I upload a brand new video. It's me by Audubon Cast, Kevinish and I'm out. Love you guys, stay safe, peace.